Suspected but not yet charged with the murder, he's presently in a psychiatric clinic while they decide whether he's fit to stand trial. We didn't want him to be killed. We didn't want to have more victims related to that catastrophe because of our children. The killing of the flight controller was a very, very sad event. And the, the saddest thing of all was that he was not actually responsible for the accident. The system responsible for the accident was the poor sky guide management and quality control of their system. The investigators had worked out exactly what went wrong that night at Skyguide and how an unfortunate series of events had made disaster almost inevitable. First, Peter's colleague goes for a break, leaving him alone to watch two radar screens several feet apart. It was a standard practice at the ATC company that at night, one air traffic controller was responsible for controlling the entire airspace of ATC Zoom. Then, following management instructions, the maintenance men start to switch things off. Peter's radar screen is working more slowly and will not warn him if two planes are about to collide. He doesn't know that. During the maintenance work, the radar system had to be run in fallback mode. In fallback mode, the controller has no STCA available. STCA is short-term collision alert a warning on the radar screen that planes are in imminent danger of collision. He did not know that the STCA system would not be available. Then by chance, an unexpected aircraft, the Aero Lloyd tourist plane, arrives at the critical moment and needs a lot of attention. It completely distracts Peter. He tries to get outside help, but the main phone system has been accidentally disconnected by the maintenance crew and the backup phone isn't working. The controller has been robbed of all the technical support he needs. The phone link with Friedrichshafen was down. At this time, there were various radio transmissions and the controller had to answer them on the different frequencies. Finally, when both planes are descending, the DHL pilots cannot tell him what's happening because the radio frequency is busy. 600 TCAS descent. Das war zum frühestmöglichen Zeitpunkt. The earliest they could do that was 23 seconds later because until then the frequency was blocked by the ATC Zurich transmission to the Tupolev crew. May 2004. It had taken the German BFU investigators 22 months to publish their final report. They found that the disaster had two major causes. Firstly, Peter Nielsen was too late in noticing the danger of a collision. Secondly, the Russian crew was wrong to obey him when he told them to descend, rather than their own TCAS equipment telling them to climb. But other pilots understand their dilemma. The TCAS commands are spoken in such a dispassionate voice. Descend. Increase descent. Such a matter-of-fact type of voice. And then there's the voice of the air traffic controller's urgent command. Descend immediately. Leave this altitude immediately. Go to another altitude at once. So, whichever voice sounded more urgent was the one the crew obeyed. Finally, the report severely criticized Skyguide for leaving a lone controller on duty that night. We have learned our lesson, and we don't have single manned operations or only one controller in front uh, of a monitor anymore. This might happen again. Another badly organized air control service or a crew might make a mistake. You're guilty or not guilty. That's not the meaning of a final report. The meaning of a final report is facts. What has happened? Why did it happen? What are the lessons to be learned? Safety requirements. Mistakes were made by us also, and we regret them deeply. We acknowledge our responsibility as set out in the BFU report. 
and we ask the families of the victims for forgiveness. At Skyguide in Zurich, a rose now sits in a vase in memory of Peter Nielsen and the tragedy of Jubilingen.